In this video, we'll talk you through the tagging window commands tool, which allows you to create clear, concise workflows when tagging a game. The basic premise of command functions is that when you press a button when tagging, this triggers a change in the tagging window. This could be that related buttons appear or disappear, the name or color of certain buttons change, or the graphic descriptor remains hidden until needed. As we said, this is an extremely useful tool, which, when set up correctly, can revolutionize your tagging processes. So, let's take a look at some of the main features of this tool. To create a command, select any button in the tagging window editing environment, and then click the commands icon in the control window. There are several types of commands available here. You can choose between renaming commands, show hide commands, change color commands, starting commands, and other commands. Let's begin with the renaming commands. The first option allows you to simply change the text on any button when clicked. Similarly, the second option lets you change only the name of the clicked button. You should be aware that commands are always triggered when the selected button is clicked and can affect either that same button or any other button on the tagging window. For example, here we've created a button that is used to monitor the game time. While this button remains unclicked, it reads stop, but when it is clicked, we want to change the text to read playing. So we use a renaming command to do this. We choose the command rename this button and add the new name. Now, when we click the button while tagging, the name will change. In this case, we're adding commands to a manual button. So we can choose whether to trigger the command at the start of the tag or at the end. So, by doing this, when you first click the button, the name changes to playing and when you click it again, it changes back to stop. You can, of course, add commands to both manual and automatic categories, as well as descriptors and inactive buttons. And commands don't simply affect the clicked button, they can also trigger changes in other buttons. For example, our possession change button can trigger other buttons. When this is clicked, we want the attack button to change to defense when the possession changes. So, selecting the possession button, we're going to add the rename button with ID1 to new button name command. The ID refers to the unique code that each button has. When you click on any button, you'll see the ID changes for each one. When a new button is created, a new ID will be assigned to it. So every button is unique in this regard allowing you to easily identify the button you want to change. Double click the command and select the specific button you want to change and enter the new name that you want it to change to. Now, whenever we click the possession change button, the attack button will switch to defense. The other options in the renaming section are used for triggering buttons or buttons of a similar type or name to a new name. You can configure the individual IDs for each button. For example, in this tagging window, where we have buttons for individual players, you can assign a specific ID to a specific button. This one, for example, will always be player number one the goalkeeper. This one will always be player two, a defender, and so on. So, when we change the button name, the ID will always remain the same. This is extremely useful for changing the lineups for different teams. To do this, we have a different button for each team at the top of the tagging window, which contain commands to change the button name to that of the player. For example, our goalkeeper button will be changed to the player name as will all the other buttons. When you click on another team, 
the button names will change to show the names of the players in that team. You'll notice that the ID for each button does not change. This means that you can change the entire lineup with a single click. In addition, you can copy and paste the commands to different buttons. This means that it's very easy to create a new team. Go to any of the team buttons. Copy and paste the commands to a new button that you create and then simply change the names of each player. Within the renaming commands, you'll also find the alternative list command. This option allows you to create a list of alternate names for each specific button. For example, for each player, we can create a list of other possible players who might be swapped into this position. To do this, Enter the alternative player name or number and accept. Now, when you right click on the button, you will see the rename list option, allowing us to quickly switch between one player and another. This also works while tagging. For example here, we tag a shot which was taken by player 1. Now if there is a substitution and we change the button to player 21, the next time we tag a shot, player 21 will be tagged in the clip instead. You can apply this to other concepts such as changing the first half to the second half with a simple click. Or changing the state of the game from tied to winning. The next set of commands are the show slash hide commands. As the title suggests, these allow you to control which buttons are shown when the command is triggered. For example, when the shot button is clicked, we want the shot and goal buttons to appear to continue the tagging process. To do this, we add a show command to the initial button and add the corresponding buttons. If you want to hide buttons when the command is triggered, you would use the hide command. We have already added these hide commands to the attack button. This means that when the attack ends in a shot, the shot and goal buttons appear. If we click the other shot button, descriptors related to the shot will appear. And finally, when we click attack again to end the tag, all of the shot buttons will be hidden again, leaving the tagging window clear. We can do exactly the same for the set pieces. You can hide specific buttons, or you can hide groups of buttons. For example, if we have a group that contains all our players, we can select a button to trigger the show, hide commands for that group. You can add this command to any button, allowing you to show and hide many buttons at the same time. So, now the player buttons will only be shown when a shot is made. Show slash hide commands can also be used for graphic descriptors. For example, when there is a free kick, the graphic descriptor will only appear when that button is clicked. The next set of commands are the change colour commands. Again, these allow you to change the colour of either the clicked button, another button on the tagging window, 
or a group of buttons. For example, and following on from the previous example where clicking the possession button changes the attack button to a defense button, we can also change the color of that button for a more visual representation. So, we set the change color of button command on the possession button so that the attack button turns blue when it is clicked. Now, when you click the possession change button, the name of the attack button will change to defense and it will turn blue. Next, let's take a look at the starting commands. These will configure how the buttons will appear at the start of the tagging process or when you exit the editing screen. Basically, it configures the initial button name, color and visibility at the start of the tagging process. For example, in this case, when we exit the editing screen, the set piece buttons are still displayed. If we want those buttons to be hidden every time we exit editing, or when we start a new analysis, we can simply add a starting command to the button and hide them on startup. You can also set the starting name of the button. The starting name is always associated with another button. For example, here we are using the option to use the button name plus the name of another button. This means that the text from the button above it will be included in the button name. So, when we start the tagging process, the button will read Possession Home. The button will change its name according to the associated button. So, if we change the name of that button, you'll see that the Possession button automatically changes. This is a useful feature which allows you to change the name of all your buttons quickly and easily. You can combine this same command by adding another command which modifies the associated button. For example, a button for a home team with a different name. You can also change the colors of the button. This is useful for preparing for a selection of different teams that you might face in a tournament, for example. You can change the teams labeled into the buttons with a single click before beginning the tagging process. Finally, we have the Other Commands option. These commands don't alter the appearance of the buttons like the previous options. Instead, they alter the button's behavior. The two options here allow you to add the previous category as a descriptor or to add the next category as a descriptor. For example, when I tag a period of possession, I want a descriptor to show what happened during that possession, as well as a separate category containing that action. So here we tag possession. The possession ends in us losing the ball. So when we click that loss, a new clip is created that shows the loss. But at the same time, the loss is added to the possession as a descriptor. Or if the possession ends in a shot, this will also create a new video clip and a short descriptor in the possession field. You can also do this the other way around, meaning that the previous category is added as a descriptor. For example, if we have a corner followed by a shot, the corner category will be added to the shot as a descriptor. This means that you can immediately see what happened directly before the shot. Finally, keep in mind that a button can contain as many commands as you want and there are many different ways to combine them. Also, you can lock buttons so that they are never affected by commands. Lastly, remember, commands can also affect other panels on the tagging window if you are using our Panel Flows tool.